Hey folks, welcome. My name is Emily and this is Gently Chaotic Knits, which is a mostly knitting video podcast series where I talk about my knitting, what I have been working on. Um, sometimes I talk about spinning and some other crafting as well, but mostly just the knitting. Uh, I am currently in uh, Oklahoma at my parents' house um, because if you missed the last couple of episodes, I, or if you're new here, um, my husband and I are traveling pretty much full time right now and are just back visiting family in between our trips. So that is when I get time to sit down and chat with you all. And so that is what I'm doing today. So today is actually December 1st and I have a minute to record and catch all up on what I've been working on. I'm sorry. I know the lighting is pretty bad and, um, if you've watched my last couple of episodes that I've done from this location, there is often a lot of, um, there's a lot of dog interruptions. <laughs> there are three dogs and one cat in this house, and so we often have some, we just have some fun with the pups. So we'll see. I actually have all three dogs are in the room with me right now. I can show you where they are. Um, right here, this is one of them looking out the window. I don't know, I guess it's not really focusing. There he is. We've got one here. And then my dog, Norman, actually just ran away. I don't know if you can see him over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've got, the gang is all here. And let me get myself back up here. And um, so let's see how long, oh, my cord. <laughs> We'll see how long this goes uh, before we just completely devolve into chaos, but I can uh, certainly contribute to the chaos myself as well, uh, as longtime viewers probably know. So anyway, let's talk about the knitting. I have, it's been, I guess, just over a month since I last recorded, and so I've got lots of stuff to talk about. I have all of my travel knitting and I've got a couple of acquisitions, some stuff that came in while I was away that I had ordered previously, or I actually have a couple of things that I picked up on my latest trip. So I will share all of that as well. And what else? I guess that's kind of it. I just cast on a couple of new things in the last little bit here. I guess just one, but we'll go through it all. So. Let's get started. I have a finished object. I actually have two kind of finished objects. The first one I am wearing, this is my Hour Pullover by Sari Nordland. And I love it so much. It is blocked. Um, and I feel like the blocking made a huge difference on this one, but this is uh, such a cozy sweater. Let me get up on here so that you can see it a little bit better. But like the, uh, the arm, the sleeves are just like so cozy and generous. Um, and I feel like it's just the perfect kind of winter cozy layer. I feel like I'm gonna be tossing this on all the time. Uh, so yes, this is the hour pullover. I knit it using two strands of yarn held together. The first strand is Life in the Long Grass Sport. I think it's just like their classic sport base in the colorway Barn. And the second is Farmer's Daughter Fibers Odang Surrey Alpaca Lace Suede. I don't, it's like a Surrey Silk Blend. And the colorway for that one is Pretty Shield. And it made this beautiful, incredible drapey fabric. The color, I'm so obsessed with this color right now. I just really, really love this red color. And I want everything in this color. So uh, I'm really, really happy to have this one finished. I cast this on originally... I think like March of this year and I worked just it's a, it's a bottom-up raglan actually this is my first time doing a bottom-up raglan so I did just like a little bit of the body and then I put it on hold uh, mostly for like spring and summer knits I did like a ton of t-shirts and tanks and stuff like that and then I came back to it uh, this fall and I'm so happy to have it done now um, just in time for the winter it's so cozy it has a really nice fold over collar um, the bottom up raglan construction, I think that, I think that I don't hate bottom up raglan construction generally, but because this was such a 
large like yoke area because there's so many stitches kind of here in the shoulder and armhole area it was just a lot to manage and I was knitting the smallest size for this pattern um my gauge I know was a little bit off because I used a sport weight for one of the strands instead of a fingering weight so um like the pattern calls for so my gauge I think was a little bit off so I know my measurements are not the same as the smallest size, but I did knit the smallest size. So I had like the number of stitches and everything for the smallest size. And it was so many stitches and just like so difficult to manage right after joining the sleeves on and managing like all the yoke stitches at once. Um, and that was for the smallest size. So I'm unsure. I don't know. Um, I love the sweater. I don't know if I would knit it again, not because like there's anything wrong with the sweater or anything, but just like, I don't think this is my favorite type of construction. And I think that this bottom up raglan in particular was a lot to manage around the yoke. I think I'm open to trying another bottom up raglan in the future, but maybe not this one. Um, like if I was going to knit another sweater of this kind of silhouette, I would probably rather do it top down, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, it was really interesting too, though, because you can see like the raglan lines go up, not all the way to the collar. They go up to here. And then you actually did like a three needle bind off here on the shoulders. So the raglan is like kind of ends here. So it's a really interesting shape. It's very like cozy and cocoony, I guess is what I would say. And I feel like it turned out really, really nice. And I wore it actually once before I blocked it. And I f feel like I was getting a lot of kind of weird, um, I don't know what to say, like fabric folding and stuff around the armpits. But now that it's blocked, I think it's draping beautifully. And it's just really, really nice. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Like the finished sweater, 100%, I'm, I love it. I think it's perfect. The color, the way that it feels, the coziness is just perfect. So that is my hour pullover by Sorry Nordland. And um, I have another finished object. So this one, I guess, uh, well, I don't know if that's important to say. I had almost finished this before we left for our last trip. So we left on, I think it was like October 31st and we were gone for just about three weeks. We went to South America and I can talk a little bit about that at the end, but I won't talk about it a ton now. Uh, and I really wanted to finish this sweater before I left on that trip, but I just couldn't get it done. We had too much other stuff to do to prepare. And I was frantically trying to finish spinning some yarn for the project I'm going to show next and everything. So I didn't quite get it done, but I finished this like two or three days after we got back from the trip. I was just really ready for it to be done because I wanted to wear it. And also I just had at that point too many sweater projects on the needles. I wanted to finish them up so that I had fewer things on the needles. So, um, so I finished this, I guess about a week ago now. So yeah. And I'm really, really, I think I actually finished this maybe on Thanksgiving in the U S. So I guess that was like just over a week ago. Um, or maybe I finished it the day after. Anyway, I finished this about a week ago. Uh, but yesterday I also finished something else that I feel like knit up way faster than I was expecting it to. Um, whoa, I feel like I just got really blown out. The light in here again is like just not great. But I finished, asterisk, my cinnabar shawl. So I wanted to show you all that. So this is a fully hand spun project. And oh my gosh, it doesn't even fit in the frame because it's so big. I don't even know if I can back up enough for you to see it all. I'll just have to show it in pieces. But um, so this is the Cinnabar Shawl, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I did a spin and knit along with a couple of my friends. So um, this is the first big project that I ever spun for. And I am so happy with how it turned out. So let me give you all the information. Um, I spun both. So, okay, well, I don't know the best way to do this, but here's the shawl. It's a beautiful, like large asymmetrical triangle shawl. You started like right up here and then it grew kind of from there. And the there's like, a, this part is two color brioche and then this part is garter. And the two color brioche side just like grows at a faster rate than the garter side. So that's what makes it like asymmetrical like this. And so um, there's two different sides. This one you can see like the two color brioche is more 
of the cream color is like in the front and then on this side it's the like variegated color but every once in a while on the brioche side there are these like contrast stripes but I which I feel like really helped when we like when I was knitting it and also I think just give it like really fun stripey interest in the finish all but anyway okay so I spun both the main color and the contrast color the main color the cream is just some 100% Rambouillet wool that I got I believe from Northwest Yarns in Washington and then the contrast color is from a patchwork kit which is Hello Yarns version of like mystery grab bags so I don't actually know what fiber type it is I think it's a mix of different types of fiber um, my friend Maya and I actually got two of the patchwork kits and then we did some mix and match and like swapped some of our fiber and so I have this uh, was just some bits of fiber from both of those patchwork kits and my goal with this was just to get something that was really warm almost like a sunrise or sunset vibe I was kind of going for with like lots of um, like yellow orange pink um, and like even little bits of either like some bits of like green and blue in there as well and uh, some of my favorite bits are like these rusty red kind of like this section here I really love I feel like it just turned out exactly as I was imagining and hoping these colors would turn out. I'm so, so happy with it. I cast this on uh, actually when I was in New York in October. Um, my friend Maya and I were together at, at Rhinebeck and we w were able to cast on our shawls together. We'd been talking about doing this project for so long and we it, it happened and I'm so excited about how it turned out. There were some issues and I'll get to those in a second, but um, I was able to, yep, cast this on with my friend Maya and then a couple of our friends, Ariel and Megan, joined in as well. Um, and yeah, I took this project with me on our trip and then I actually ended up working on it more than I expected because there was an issue with one of the other projects that I brought along and I'll talk about that in a second. But I ended up just like really working on this a lot and then for some of our days while we were traveling we just had a lot of like long drives and my sweet sweet husband did pretty much all of the driving actually I don't know if I drove at all I think he did actually 100% of the driving so I was able to knit a ton <laughs> during like long drives and flights and all of that and so I ended up getting a lot of this project finished and then I uh, just kept working on it after we got back. We've been back for the last like week and a half or so and I just kept working on it and then I finally finished it yesterday. So I bound off yesterday. It has not been blocked yet. Um, I think it'll probably grow even more once it's been blocked. And let's talk about <laughs> some unintentional modifications that I had to make because I ran out of yarn. So I new okay well let me just take a step back I when I was spinning for this project I knew that I was gonna be tight on my main color I had eight ounces of fiber and given like just generally how much yardage I was getting I I the amount of yardage I was expecting to get based on like the weight of yarn and the amount of fiber that I had I knew it was going to be close to having enough yarn for the main color of the shawl oh, oh sorry my pups are seeing something outside uh anyway I knew it was going to be close but I went ahead and I spun up the two or the eight ounces of fiber so I made two skeins of yarn and my yard is just like a little bit under what the pattern called for but I was hoping that you know, most patterns include like a little bit of a yardage buffer. And I was hoping that like basically they recommend the yardage that the pattern calls for or that the designer recommends that you have for the pattern is normally more than they actually used or more than they actually expect you to use based on like the size that you're knitting. This of course is just like a shawl. So it's one, there's only one size. But anyway, I was hoping that like it would be okay because I would just fall into that buffer region and I would end up having enough yarn um and as it, 
we started, I started getting closer to the end of the shawl. I was realizing that, especially for the main color, I was just eating so much yarn every single row. So toward the end of the shawl, I had so many stitches that not only did every row take an eternity, it felt like, like it was close to 20 minutes per a single row of this, but also each row was taking like four grams of yarn, which I don't know if that like that means anything to you but th that feels like a lot to me like a I don't know you know a normal 100 gram skein of yarn you would only be able to do like I guess 25 rows um because each one was taking like four grams of yarn anyway I started like weighing my yarn at the end before and after the row and that's how I realized it was taking like four grams of yarn and I knew I was gonna run out. I just knew I was not gonna have enough to do the full border on the bottom. So the main color, you you do this like kind of edging throughout the shawl, but then at the bottom you do just the main color for, I think you're supposed to do like 16 rows of garter stitch on the bottom. And I only had enough yarn to do like five rows. <laughs> This bottom border is supposed to be a lot longer. Uh, I actually knew I was gonna run out, so this bottom brioche section, or like the bottom section here, I cut short two rows as well. Or I guess I cut short four rows. I cut short two main color rows. And then I was just like, I'm gonna go as long as I can. And I, I was really unsure what to do, and so I was chatting with some of my friends that are knitting the cinnabar along with me about what to do and got like tons of really good suggestions about options, including like put, doing some of the border with the contrast color. And um, my original plan was to just like try to spin some more yarn for it. I don't have any more of the fiber that I used originally for the main color, but I have some other fiber that's really close. It's also cream and rambouillet. I think I talked about this on the podcast before that I got some more fiber in the hopes that I could spin it up and use it for this project if I really needed to. So my plan was just to spin more yarn. And then Maya had a suggestion to just like, since it's gonna take me a while to spin some more, I probably wouldn't even be able to do it before, in time before I leave for my next trip. And I really it was so close to being done and I really wanted to, I like yesterday I was like, I wanna finish this, I really wanna be done. I. Uh, she had the suggestion, she was like, why don't you just bind off now? Even if it's a little, the border's a little bit short, you can just bind off now. And then you can come back later. If you spin more yarn, you can add it to the border, but that way you can still wear the shawl now if you want to. And so I thought that was a really good idea. I mean, I know it would be annoying to pick out the bind off and, um, and so I don't know, I knew that there was a good chance that if I went ahead and did the bind off now, that I would not be coming back to fix it, to spin more yarn and whatever. And so knowing that, I still decided that I wanted to just go ahead and bind off. And I'm actually not unhappy with the border. Like, I don't think it's too short. I wish it was longer, but I'm not unhappy with it. So I think I, think I will probably end up leaving it. But I thought I was weighing my yarn and I thought I left enough. I knew that the bind off was gonna take more yarn than a normal row because I, it also calls for like a stretchy bind off. So, excuse me, you use even more yarn for a stretchy bind off. So I thought that I left enough yarn for the bind off and I was almost done. I'll show you guys. You can see here, this is where I was when I ran out of yarn. And like, this is a long edge. Like this is a really, really long edge. So I was so close to being done and I ran out right at the end. <sighs> and I was like, okay, I could rip back and I could bind off one row earlier or I could wait and I could spin some more yarn and I could just use that for the bind off or rip out the bind off and then finish the border, like do more, whatever. And then I thought, okay, I have a yarn in my stash. It's not super similar. It's the color is pretty close. Here, I'll hold up the two strands and <laughs> you can see them. The color is pretty close, but it's quite a lot finer. So I don't know, maybe you can tell. So this one 
is not the yarn I spun that I added at the end. This is the yarn I spun. So I don't know if you can <laughs> tell the difference. They're pretty close. But I was like, I, I just need to be done with this. At this point, I was so over it that I was like, I just need to be done. I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> I need to be done with this project. So I just went and cut off like a little bit of that yarn and I finished the bind off and I called it. And I seriously doubt I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more to the border. I mean, maybe someday, but I really don't think I am because I'm not that unhappy with it. Like, it's a little short. What I really wanted is for it to match roughly the width of the edging on the sides. And it doesn't. It's like a little bit shorter. But I also feel like it matches pretty well the width of the contrast stripes. Like, you can see this border part is roughly the same height as the contrast stripe here and so I think that's fine and like I'm happy with that so yeah it's done <laughs> that's what matters I love it I'm happy with it I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna wear it probably just kind of bunched up and like over the shoulder like that like how cute is that and the colors are just so fun I feel like it's just perfect. So yeah, there it is, my Cinnabar shawl. I'm really, really happy with it. It's so squishy. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could feel this. It's so squishy. Um, and it just makes me, like, I don't know, knitting with my hand spun is such a treat. It just feels, feels really, really, really good to knit with my hand spun. So this made me, like, really itch to knit more with my hand spun, spin more yarn. Um, and do more big projects too because I feel like this was even more rewarding than when I knit the socks because it's just such a large project and yeah I'm just really happy with it so that is my second finished object my cinnabar shawl okay now I don't have anything else finished I have some other works in progress that I want to show you um so let's get started so the other things that i took on my trip that i worked on while i was traveling the sweater project that i brought i think i talked about casting on last time i'm gonna be honest y'all because it's been a while i don't really remember what i talked about last time i remember like what i probably should have talked about but i don't actually really remember what i talked about i feel like my focusing is weird today let me see if i can scoot this a little closer and a little bit better Anyway, I don't really remember what I talked about. Um, don't really remember what I talked about. And you all probably also don't really remember what I talked about last time. So we're all in the same boat and that's fine. But I cast on the Calm Down Cardigan. It's a pattern I think by Lily Kate makes uh, on Instagram. And I am doing this as a knit along with some of my friends, so some of the folks from the Seattle knitting group that I, um, I guess I was in when I lived in Seattle, and <clears throat> some of our friends from a sweet San Francisco knitting group as well, we decided to all together do the Calm Down Cardigan. Sorry, my cat is actually making an appearance. You can hear her um, <laughs> meowing. Okay. Anyway, so I cast this on um, and took it with me on this last trip as my travel knitting. So like my big sweater kind of travel project. Uh, I am knitting the smallest size and this is the yarn I'm using is Woolberry Fiber Co. Natural DK in the colorway Cool Breeze. So I'll hold this up so you can see it. Don't know how the light is going to do with that, but... Uh, really, really beautiful yarn. I have loved working with this. It feels amazing. It's really soft. It's has it's a non superwash wool, but it's still really, really soft. And I love the way that it feels. And knitting with it has been such a dream. It's still really nice and soft and squishy, and just oh, it feels so good. So I cast this on. I brought three skeins with me on this trip. So I brought other projects as well, like I brought my shawl and I brought a sock project, so I thought three skeins would be enough for uh, for this trip. 
I just randomly grabbed one of the skeins of yarn. I like caked them up before I left. I randomly grabbed one. I cast on. I started knitting. I knit, I think you do like one of the front panels and then you do the back panel and then you do the other front panel. So I knit one of the front panels and then I was partway through the back panel when I ran out of yarn from that first skein. So I just grabbed another one of the skeins and this, I know this is my fault. This is hand dyed yarn. I know that I should have been alternating skeins, but I wasn't because I didn't want to. And especially with like traveling and stuff, I didn't always want to carry multiple balls of yarn. I didn't want to be doing yarn management. I just, didn't want to. So I grabbed the second ball of yarn and I started knitting. And after I'd knit like maybe a couple inches, I just looked down and was like, this just does not, I can really tell the difference between these two skeins. So, um, let me see. I, you probably won't be able to tell on the camera actually at all. This is the one I had started knitting with. It's just a little bit lighter. And so like these are, this is a tonal yarn. And so it has some like very subtle, very like variations in it. There are some like lighter parts and some darker parts. I don't know if you can tell that in this ball at all, but this one I think has less kind of of those variations and was just a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can really tell the difference between these two here, but this one, it was noticeable when you knit it up. That this one was just a little bit lighter. So I ripped it back because I knew that it was going to bother me. And luckily the third skein that I bought, brought matched the first one pretty well. So I was able to just start knitting with the second skein that I brought. Uh, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to knit with the third skein at all on the trip because I can't, I don't, I think I'm gonna have to use this for like the button band or something because it just doesn't quite match the others or I'm gonna have to like alternate skeins on the sleeves or something. I'm gonna have to do something to get this one in. I kind of think that the other skeins match my like original one and the one I already have worked up here pretty well, but I think it's maybe just this one that's like a little bit lighter. So. If I don't end up needing to use, I think I bought seven skeins for this project. So if I don't end up needing to use all of them, I won't use this one. Um, if I do end up needing to use it all, I think I'm gonna use this one just for the button band because I don't think it'll be as noticeable just for the button band. Um, but then I should be okay with the others. But anyway, I knew I could only, like basically I brought three skeins of yarn on this trip and I knew I was only gonna be able to use two of them because the third one, like it wasn't time yet to do the button band. So I couldn't do the button band. I didn't want to knit it into the project where it was going to be really noticeable. I could have started alternating skeins, but even then I felt like it was different enough that I would rather use skeins that I had at home that I thought maybe would match better. So anyway, I kind of stalled out on this project because I knew that there was only so much I could do, but I still got quite a bit of it done. So I did finish both front panels and the back panel and I'm joined at the underarm. It has this really fun like ribbing detail along the side and also like on the shoulders you can see it has that like ribbing detail and also like around the armholes. I don't know, it's kind of folding in so you can't tell as well, but I'll kind of pull it back out. It has like that ribbing detail around the armholes as well. So it's really nice. The yarn feels amazing. I think the color is really pretty. So I, yeah, I really like it. Um, I haven't worked on this a ton since getting back from traveling just because I've been, I really wanted to finish Hour and then I was really focused on finishing Cinnabar and then now I'm focused on working on something else. So I'll show you all that in a second. But so this one may be on hold for a little bit while I work on finishing up some other stuff, but I still am really enjoying it. And I think the sweater is gonna be really nice. I think it's gonna be just super wearable. This color I think is really pretty and, um, and the yarn feels so good. So anyway, I am knitting that along with some friends as well. And I just, I don't know, I, I get a lot of enjoyment and just like sharing updates and chatting with friends about how it's going and everything. So that has been really, really fun as well. And this is, I normally don't share what bags my stuff is in, but I love this bag so much. I bought this at Rhinebeck this year. This is my super fun matter root bag. Um, and I actually have all of the yarn for this project in this bag right now. I have seven skeins of yarn total. Some of it is like knit into the sweater, but it's all in here. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, so yeah, that is that work in progress. I have a couple others to show you. So the other big sweater project that I am now working on that I am devoting full attention to is I picked back up Aurelia. So I'm ready. I feel like I've given this sweater a couple of attempts for a variety of reasons. I just have not finished it and I'm ready. I want, I want this sweater. Look at the color. It, it matches the sweater I'm wearing very closely. I am having a rusty red moment. Like I'm very into this color right now. Okay, I want to finish this before the holidays. Maybe that's wild. I know today is December 1st. I know this is an all over cabled sweater. I know all of those things, but I really have this vision of wearing this sweater like at Christmas time. I think it'll be perfect. It's beautiful. It's I just feel like it's gonna be really nice. So we'll see. We're about to leave in a couple days on, I guess, I don't know, like five days. We're leaving on another trip and this one is very driving heavy. And I think that my husband will likely do a lot of the driving. So I should have a lot of driving time. The trouble is sometimes when I look down while we're driving, I get a little bit car sick and it's cables. So like I have to look at it. Uh, so we'll see. I may have to, I don't know, take a lot of breaks and stuff, but I really, really want to finish this. So, okay, let me give you all the information. This is Aurelia, also by Sorry Nordland. I am using Sorella Yarn Cashmere DK in the colorway Brick. And here is the light again. The shadows are really something. But here is what it looks like. It is just this most beautiful red color and the uh did i say the yarn base it's their cashmere dk base which is a mostly merino wool but has a little bit of cashmere in it really really nice yarn feels great and i feel like the stitch definition has been really nice too like you can see the cables really well not super great because of my lighting but <laughs> if i hold it up to the light you can see it uh I have a long way to go. I am, I mean, you can see where I am. I'm not even done with the yoke. And I have three weeks until I want to have this done and blocked. Okay, no, three weeks probably until I want to have it done. I have three weeks. So I'm thinking, today is December 1st. I definitely need to have the yoke done in the next week, like, I think that the most, if I can do finish the yoke and do the collar in the next week and then do both sleeves in one week and then the rest of the body in one week, then I can maybe make it. Is that crazy? <laughs> I don't know. That may be crazy. I'm knitting. I think I'm knitting the second size actually for this one. My gauge I think is a little bit off. Um, I think my measurements will be a little smaller than the second size. Like I think I'll end up in between the first and the second size. I don't want this one to be super oversized, but I also don't want it to be like negative ease. I'm hoping I'm shooting for like in the two to four inches of positive ease range. And I really just, I want this sweater so badly, but even now, like we're not even to the widest part of the yoke and the cable row. So it's basically like every other row you have to do a ton of cables on. You do like a cable row and then you do a row that's mostly just knits and pearls. The cable rows take forever. They take so long and it's just going to keep growing from here. I think the body will be better because there are like seed stitch panels on the sides. But right now there's like a cable chart for the front, a cable chart for each of the sleeves, a cable chart for the back. It, like I'm doing cables like all over. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. And like the way that these raglan increases look, like look at that. This I'm obsessed with. Like it's so good. It's so pretty. And in this red color, it's beautiful. And I just wanna have the sweater so bad. Okay, sorry. my foot kind of fell asleep so I'm I'm having that fuzzy foot feeling you know 
Mm, I am wearing some really cute panda socks though. I can hold those up and you can see them. There they are. Um, okay, anyway, let me keep going. So did I say everything I need to say about this? Basically, I need to only work on this pretty much for the next three weeks because I wanna get it done. But I'm gonna have lots of driving and hopefully I can get it done. But I cast something new on <laughs> that I probably shouldn't have, but I did anyway, because I just really wanted to. And it's really, really cute. So I guess this is a Sorry Nordland podcast, actually. This is me just gushing about Sorry Nordland is what this is. Uh, because Sorry posted on Instagram about a like a little mystery advent knit along. And I know she did this last year with a pair of socks that I cast on at the beginning and then I never finished. And I think I actually have since ripped out. But it was a really cute little shawl. And you know how like it feels right now, these little like tiny handkerchief shawls are really popular right now. And they're so cute. And I just, I haven't made one yet. And I didn't get, a yarn advent calendar this year. I have the Explore Knit Solstice box, which you open yarn, uh, it's like four full skeins and you open one skein of yarn per week um, leading up to the winter solstice, which I love and I'm, I have already opened the first one and it's great and I love that and I'm excited about, but I didn't get a like every single day advent yarn advent calendar this year. And so, I thought that doing like a little advent knit would be really fun. And then some of my friends, the same friends that are doing the uh, calm down cardigan knit along, uh, many of us are also doing this little mystery knit along. And they were just like posting about their yarn, yarn combos and like chatting about it. And I just was like, I know I'm gonna do it. Like I, I'm gonna do it. I knew <laughs> I was gonna do it. It's so cute. So anyway, um, I think that she has posted online like the first week spoiler already. So this shouldn't be a spoiler, but in case you don't wanna see what the first clue looks like for the Sorry Nordland, it's called the Turtle Dove Shawl. So in case you don't, or I don't even know if it's shawl, Turtle Dove, whatever. Turtle Dove MCAL is what the um, hashtag is on Instagram. But in case you don't wanna see it, you should look away now, but I'm gonna show it. So here is my, I'm finished clue one actually this morning and here it is and it's so cute and it's so fun to knit like this has been the most fun <laughs> like I have loved knitting this so let me show you my yarn combo the pattern calls for one strand of fingering weight yarn and one strand of like a lace weight fluffy yarn and so here these are my yarns and oh my gosh, I just found them from Stash. So I didn't like buy anything for this. I just went stash diving and looked for um, something that would work. So this is Explore Knits Moonstone, which I think was actually from one of their like advents or solstice boxes or whatever um, a couple years ago. And I don't know if the light is like really showing this properly. Do I need to like block the direct light. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's a really beautiful, like subtly variegated kind of pastel-y pink, blue, purple type color. And I don't actually know what this is. <laughs> this is just like a pink, I'm pretty sure based on how it feels, I think it's a mohair silk, not a Surrey alpaca silk, but this was just in my stash. It was already caked up. I don't know what this is. I think it, I kind of think it might be leftover from my soiree sweater, which I knit like a couple years ago, in which case this is, um, sorry, I have fluff in my mouth. Uh, this is from, Viola and the Moon, I think is their yarn. Uh, but I could totally be wrong. This could be something else. I don't actually know what it is, but I thought it paired beautifully and the fabric is just so dreamy. I feel like it, I don't know, it's not in your face like holiday, wintry, but I kind of feel like it has like a little bit of a, like a sugar plum type vibe, maybe. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. And I normally don't do purple and I think this does seem 
like maybe purple is the most dominant because the pink and blue kind of mix together to seem purpley as well. But I actually really like it. And I don't know. I'm really having a lot of fun with this. I'm enjoying it a lot. I was deciding between this and also just like a plain gray alpaca. And I think that would have been really nice too and maybe more wearable for me, but this has just been the most fun yarn combination and it feels so good and knitting this is so fun and I've just been really, really enjoying it. So I know I should be spending like pretty much all my knitting time on Aurelia, but I've been just taking some pauses and have been really enjoying this too. So this is the Turtle Dove um, Mystery Knit Along and this is just the week one clue. So yeah, you just get one clue per week until I think December 20th is when we get the last clue. It's like four clues and then finish it up. So yeah, really, really fun. That's the turtle dove. And then the only other thing that I've been working on is just socks. So I brought, I have just like a pile of socks and I normally like to only have one pair of socks on the needles at a time. And I don't, I have multiple pairs in varying states and I was just gonna do like a quick little, almost like an audit. I'll tell you where all my socks are. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. And then hopefully by the next time I record, multiple of these pairs will be done. So I think I've shared about these two in the past. I have my self-striping holiday socks from last year that just need heels. These still just need heels. This is from, uh, the yarn is from Nomadic Yarns and the colorway I think is called Knit Miss. All I need to do is just do an afterthought heel in both of these. So I really, I really need to do this because I wanna finish these like before the holidays because my friend Maya and I actually, we, so we each bought some self-striping holiday yarn to cast on our like Christmas Eve cast on socks together last year. And then this year we're actually swapping the leftovers. So I knit Knit Miss last year and I gave her the leftover yarn and she knit this one, which I don't actually remember the name of at all. <laughs> but uh, this one, which is super fun and so I'm gonna knit this one this year, but I have to finish these socks so that I can wear them when we're casting on these ones this year. So need to put the heels in this one. Then I also have another holiday sock set from last year that I bought like around the holidays last year. I cast these on, I don't remember when. I knit these a while ago and they're done except I just need, I did the, so these are the, totally rad ribbed socks, I think, by um, Summerly Knits. And I did the option where you uh, like do like a fold over, I don't wanna say collar, this is not a collar, like the fold over hem on the top. And I literally just need to sew down the top of these socks and like weave in the ends, that's it. So that's all I need to do on these. So this and this had better be done by the time I talk to you next, okay. Then when I went on a trip in October, I cast on the Little Black Socks by Summerly Knits in this really cute Magpie Fibers. I love the cables on this. Also, side note, I have gotten super comfortable now cabling without a cable needle and I'm obsessed and it's so much faster and I don't feel nervous anymore that I'm going to drop my stitches and I love it. So if you haven't tried cabling without a cable needle, 100% you should do it. I have three projects <laughs> right now on my needles that all have cables and I can't imagine having a cable needle. Like do it without, 100%. Anyway, this yarn is from Magpie Fibers. I got it at La Mercerie and the colorway I think is Ghost Town. And this is just like a perfect fall colorway. Now we're moving from fall into winter. I'm a little bit late. I also have this really cutie little um, candy corn stitch marker on this pair. I really wanna finish these. This is a cashmere blend. This is Swanky Sock from Magpie Fibers. It feels so good. I want these socks <laughs> so badly, but 
I didn't take them on my trip because I do a lot of sock knitting when we're like walking around places. We're doing like walking tours or whatever in taxis or whatever and the cables were just like a little bit too much to pay attention to. So I cast on these socks. So this is in my hometown is the colorway and it was the main skein from the Stress Knits Advent last year. So I got the Stress Knits Advent. It was actually a tonal advent. So every mini skein for like, there were 24 mini skeins. Every single one was a tonal. And then the final skein that you got, that you opened on December 25th was a variegated. And it was this one. And here, this is like half of it. So I had a little bit of an issue actually with this sock. I will talk about in a second. This is a gorgeous colorway, by the way. I wanna make sure that I gush about it because it's so pretty. Uh, just like a really beautiful warm base with these like the I don't know if you this is showing up properly But these like dark teal and like peachy and yellow like golden bits It feels very me and I love it so much and I'm obsessed with this colorway. But anyway I Cast on this sock like I think actually on sorry. I've got fuzz on my tongue still I cast on this sock I think actually on the plane on our way to Argentina and uh, knit most of the sock. I had already done the heel and everything and I was like halfway up the leg when I realized that actually in a first for me, I realized they were gonna be too small, which is wild because my socks always turn out too big because I'm such a loose knitter, but I have made a huge change in my knitting. I think I talked about this a little bit last time, but I added I changed the way that I tension my yarn. I added a little bit. So like when I hold my yarn, I knit continental. When I hold my yarn, the way that I held it before, I basically just like let the yarn kind of fall through my fingers. So I don't know if you can see this, but basically I would put the yarn. I don't know if this is interesting, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, I would put the yarn over my index finger and then um, like inside of my second and third fingers or third and fourth fingers. I don't know, however you count them. Basically my middle finger, my ring finger, and then I would bring it back to the front and put it over my pinky finger. And that's how I held it. That was it. So the only tensioning I was doing was kind of like in between my ring finger and my pinky finger. I was just kind of like holding on to the yarn in here. And I realized that I think that part of the reason why my knitting was so loose was just because I wasn't really tensioning the yarn that much and so it was hard for me to like keep it pretty tight. So what I did is I actually started with, um, it was with this pair of socks. I was really tired of my socks turning out too big. And so I thought at least for sock projects, I could try changing the way that I tension my yarn to see if I could tighten up my gauge a little bit. So what I did was I actually just took the strand and I wrapped it around my pinky so that I have an extra wrap like around my pinky and it made such a huge difference. So these socks, you can tell like this is a reasonable sized sock. I have quite skinny feet and I think these will still like fit my feet pretty well. I'm actually a little nervous that they'll be too tight now that I had that issue with my, the previous pair, but um, I think they'll be fine. But anyway, I think it made such a huge difference. So then I think when I went to knit this pair of socks, I overcorrected because I was still using like a similar stitch count to what I would use before when I had such a, a much looser uh, sock knitting gauge, but I added the pinky wrap and so it ended up being too tight. And so I knit most of a sock and then I kept trying it on and I was like, the stitches are just stretching so much. It's just too tight. So I ripped the whole thing out and then I re-knit, I've re-knit most of the foot with more stitches. So I decided to keep the pinky wrap and I just am doing, I was doing, I think, 54 stitches and now I'm doing 60 or something like that. I think that's maybe right, or 62? I don't remember. I think this is 60. Um, and maybe it was like 52 or 54 before. Anyway, it was too small before. This I think may actually be a little bit too big. I wish I had, I'm um, I'm using the numbers for the DRK Everyday socks actually, but I'm just not doing the ribbing. So if there had been an option in between, I probably would have done that, but yeah. I think it'll be fine. 
I'm used to having socks that are a little bit big. So if it ends up a little bit big, it'll be fine. But anyway, this is just like a plain, I guess it's kind of like a DRK everyday sock, but it's also kind of like a vanilla sock because I'm just not doing the ribbing. So it's just plain. And so that's it for sock knitting. So I'm not sure on this next trip, which ones I'll bring with me. I really need to finish these. I'd like to finish these before I leave so that I don't have to take them with me on our trip, but we'll see. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have been working on. I have some new stuff that I want to cast on soon. Oh, actually, yeah, I have another pair of socks that I want to cast on that I may take with me on this trip. I know I just said I have too many sock projects, but I had some really exciting sock yarn come in the mail, so um, that may have to be cast on pretty soon. So anyway, that is pretty much all I've been working on. I have not been spinning much. Honestly, I've just been really focused on finishing knitting stuff, so haven't really been spinning, and I'm really enjoying everything I've been working on. I love this sweater. I love my shawl. And then everything else, I'm just knitting cables and it's fun. So I have a couple acquisitions to share with you. I had a couple things come in while I was out of town. So let me show you those. So I ordered just one skein of yarn from the Explorer Knits um, Spain collection. So I just got one skein of, uh, this is Barceloneta on her cashmere caverns sock base so it's a um merino cashmere nylon sock yarn feels great i had this idea especially because a lot of the yarn dyers that i love were doing collections uh based on places that we are planning to travel in the next year so i wanted to get a skein of sock yarn from that collection that i could knit on while i am at that place and so we're planning to go to spain next year so i wanted to just get a skein of sock yarn to knit on while i'm in spain so i'm not sure yet like what pattern i'll use for this um maybe something that's like pretty simple but with like light cables or something like that i don't know if i'm gonna work on it while we're traveling i don't want it to be too complicated but also this is like I don't know, I guess it would make good basic socks too, but I feel like I want to take advantage of the, like, fairly, um, like, it's a solid, pretty solid, like, tonal yarn, so I think it would be a good opportunity to do, like, a textured sock, so I'll probably do something like that, but that is one, and then on that theme, I also shopped from Paisley Knits New Zealand collection because we are also planning to go to New Zealand next year, so I got this sock set from her New Zealand collection. And actually it's not on here. I don't remember the colorway name, but I will try to look it up and put it in the description box. Um, but this is also, I don't remember the sock base. I kind of think this is their, her non-superwash sock base, um, but it is just gorgeous. Y'all know how much I love like a blue, like tealy blue, green. And I think this is just really beautiful. So um, I was had so much trouble deciding between um, the colorways that Coley had available in this New Zealand update because I loved so many of them. But in the end, I am trying to limit. I don't like all my yarn is in Ikea bags right now and I really need to not be purchasing very much yarn. So I was like, just the one. So I just got this one. And then I actually, um, a while ago, I had ordered a couple things from Coley's Harry Styles collection as well. And so those came in the same shipment as the New Zealand. So I also got um, her golden colorway. I got on her 100% cashmere base and this feels incredible it's so so i mean it's 100 cashmere it feels so good and my plan with this was to do one of those like little tiny kind of like neckerchiefs i think in the really bright yellow would be so fun and also would feel so good on my skin so that's the plan for that right now and then i also could not resist i don't know how much i love yellow i got her sunflower colorway as well this is on salty sock which is the 80 percent merino 20% recycled nylon and look at these like light blue bits I just love it so much I'm sorry it's getting kind of blown out if I hold it back maybe it's a little bit better but it's just this really beautiful 
yellowy, bluey color. I have so much sock yarn, y'all, and I just really need to work through it. But anyway, I also got a really fun um, package from Creme Key Soul Wool. And they had reached out to me a little while ago asking if I wanted to try out any of their yarns. And um, I said, yes, I would love to. And so they sent me a couple of balls. I actually haven't opened the packaging. I like stuck my finger in so that I could see it and feel it, but it's wrapped like really beautifully and I didn't want to ruin it, but um, maybe I'll just flip it over so that I can pull the, the balls out because I do want to show you. I got three balls of their, this is um, their Edelweiss Alpaca 6-ply. It's a alpaca sock yarn and it feels amazing. It's actually more, it's a 6-ply, so it's closer to a sock weight, or sorry, not a sock weight, a sport weight. It feels so good. It feels so good because it's got like tons of alpaca in there. I don't remember the actual breakdown in fiber content and I'm not seeing that on here so I will have to link it but oh okay it's um 65% wool 25% polyamide and 10% alpaca and it feels really really good um and I think this would make a really fun like cozy pair of ribbed socks I think would be really nice with this so I'm sorry my pups again I think there may be someone here. Um, I'm almost done. So anyway, I, uh, I got three balls of this to make, I think I'm going to try to do like a really cozy, like slouchy pair of ribbed socks with this, I think will be really beautiful. So that may, I may be taking on my, um, on my trip. And this yarn, I just for like full transparency was, uh, this was gifted to me as well. So um, yeah, I really love it and I can't wait to, to get that on the needles. So there is that. And then I also have a couple of things that I picked up in my travels that I wanted to share. So I did not really seek out yarn stores, um, yarn or like fiber stores when we were traveling. I just like I don't know. I try, especially since I'm traveling with my husband, I don't want to like take too much of our time to go out of the way to go to yarn stores. And we had so much other stuff planned that we were like kind of packing in there. And I didn't expect it to be like a big yarn destination. A lot of the places we were going, um, for some of like our later trips, like when we go to Scotland and Ireland, it's probably going to be a little bit about yarn and that will have to be okay. But for this one, we went to, I guess I can talk about my travel a little bit here as well. So we went to, we were primarily in Argentina. So we started in Buenos Aires and spent some days in the city. And then we went up north to Iguazu Falls. Um, and we actually, Iguazu Falls sits like right on the border between Argentina and Brazil. So we spent one day on the Argentina side and then one day on the Brazil side. And then we flew down to Patagonia and we spent the most of the rest of our time in the Patagonia region of South America, both in Argentina and also in Chile. So we went to a couple of national parks there. We did tons of like really incredible hiking and just had like, it was absolutely a dream. I could talk about our time in Patagonia forever and Argentina generally, like just our, their, our entire trip was incredible. Um, and I think it was one that really surprised me. Like I knew that I was really going to enjoy it, but especially our time in Patagonia was absolutely a highlight, like one of the best trips of my entire life. It was stunning. We had just the most amazing time. But um, anyway, back to the yarn and fiber. We went to, we stayed in um, this town called Puerto Natales in Chile, in uh, like Southern Chile in the Patagonia region, right outside of Torres del Paine National Park. And as we're walking to dinner, one night we actually walked past two like yarn and fiber shops. Actually one uh, is this company called Patagonia Wool and the woman there was so nice and was incredible and just had a great time chatting with her. But she uh, actually spins a lot. Uh, so she had all this fiber that she gets from local sheep, like from the Patagonia region of um, South America. And she like spins the fiber into uh, like this pretty thick, yarn like single ply yarn and then knits it up into like tons of really fun stuff hats beanies that kind of stuff and dyes it and these really fun colors as well and uh she 
was only selling like the yarn and some of the finished stuff too, like blankets and that kind of thing. And I wasn't super psyched about the yarn, but my husband had this idea, like, why don't you ask if you can buy the fiber? Because she had actually taken us back to her back room and showed like these piles, like massive bundles of fiber that she had. And I'll try to put a picture up on the screen here. But I asked her and she said yes. So she sold me some of the fiber and she actually packaged it up so tightly for me. This was so sweet so that I could buy more of it. I bought, I guess it was like 250 grams. So like a little more than eight ounces of fiber. It's in this bag. I'm leaving it like this because like it's not hurting the fiber. And I might as well keep it packed small right now. Um, but she packed it up like so tightly for me so that it would fit in our suitcase. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but I just had to get some fiber. So um, here it is. This is my Patagonia wool. And I don't know actually the sheep breed. I may message her. Um, I'll put her Instagram information down below so that you guys can find her. And she actually said she ships worldwide as well. This fiber feels great. Would definitely recommend purchasing some. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know if she would I assume she would sell you the fiber because she sold it to me, but you can also get her yarn and her like sweaters and beanies and stuff too. What was I saying? Oh, I may message her and ask more about like the sheep breeds and stuff because I don't know actually what sheep breed this is, but it feels really good and I don't know what I'm gonna use it for yet, but I had to grab some. So that was just like we happened upon. And then we kept walking to our like dinner spot that we picked out and like two stores down, this wasn't like a yarn store. It was just kind of like a variety. They had like some gifts and sweaters and jewelry and that kind of stuff. But I saw through the window a shelf that was like filled with yarn. And so I went in and I started feeling it. And I'm sorry, I haven't opened this since getting back. So I have to make crinkly sounds. Um, but anyway, they had some of this beautiful cream Patagonian merino wool. And I had to get some because I wish you guys could feel it. It feels so good. It feels incredible. Um, it's like locally produced. And it was also just like fairly inexpensive, especially for like the quality of the yarn. So I got two skeins. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to make with it. I feel like some really nice soft mittens would be nice, although those probably wouldn't be super hard wearing, but like a beanie or, I mean, I have two skeins. I think it's roughly fingering weight. Um, I don't know how many yards it is. <laughs> I don't know very much information about it, but it felt so good. So I grabbed two skeins of it. So that was my little Patagonia uh, yarn and fiber experience. And then on our last day, uh, in South America, we were in Santiago, Chile, and we were just spending a day there before flying home. And we went to, uh, we were going up, there's this really tall building in Santiago that we wanted to go up to the top for like views, um, sunset views that night. And that building is like right next to and kind of like attached to like a really large shopping center. And as we were walking up to the building, I saw someone carrying like a shopping bag that had a ball of yarn on it. And so I was like, I bet there's, oh, sorry, there's barking happening. I thought, okay, I bet there is like a yarn store in this shopping center. So I looked it up and there was, and the yarn store is called, let me see, I may say this wrong. Reves Duracho, I don't know. Some of y'all may be familiar with this brand. Spoilers, this is what I bought. Um, but this is the brand and it seems like it's a pretty large commercial yarn company in Chile. And they had a beautiful store. Um, I think my husband actually took a picture so I'll try to put the picture up here if I remember to. But it was a gorgeous store and um, it was a little bit of a different vibe than I feel like we have for a lot of yarn stores here. I guess I'm, I'm more used to like local yarn stores and not as much commercial yarn stores. Uh, but it was really beautiful and they had some really great yarns, of course, commercially like spun and dyed. So it was like fairly inexpensive as well. And they just had this sock yarn, um, with these like little tiny speckles in colors that I love, like a little rusty kind of orangey color and a uh, really pretty blue and gold. 
And so I got a couple of balls of it to make some really cute speckledy socks. Like how cute is that? So anyway, that is it for my purchases. And I was not expecting to make any yarn or fiber purchases on this trip. And I was so pleasantly surprised by these finds. So yeah, that's what I got on my trip. Otherwise our trip I mentioned briefly, but like it was incredible. We had the best time. We did some really big hiking. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Patagonia region, we did the Laguna de los Tres or the hike up to Fitzroy viewpoint um, in El Chalten. And we also did the Mirador Torres or like the big towers hike in Torres del Paine National Park as well. And that was incredible. We walked on a glacier. <laughs> we um, saw like the most incredible rainbows over the Iguazu Falls. We, I got to visit Teatro Colon, which is like one of the most incredible uh, opera houses, theaters in the world. And it was just, an, yeah, it was an amazing trip. We had a great time. So I know this is when I'm gonna be thinking about and remembering and wanting to go back for a really long time. It was just amazing. And the food, oh my gosh, the food was amazing too. So we had a great trip came back home for the holidays for Thanksgiving in the US and um, actually had a little bit of a longer break here. We're back uh, home with our families for about two weeks. And so we've already done just over a week of that. So we just have like four or five days left. And then we are heading on a little road trip to some national parks in Texas and New Mexico. So we are going to Big Bend National Park Guadalupe Mountains National Park. We are going to Carlsbad Caverns and we're also going to White Sands National Park as well. So that'll be fun. We're just gonna make like a little loop. It'll be like a week and a half. Um, and then we'll be back home with our families for the holidays for um, like Christmas and New Year's. So that will be really fun. So anyway, that's pretty much all I had to say. Oh, I also wanted to show, I guess, well, you know what? I was going to show my, I've only opened one skein of my um, Iceland sol, uh, solstice box from Explorer Knits, but I think I'm going to wait until my next episode and I'm just going to show them all then because I'm not going to be able to show like one per week. So I'm just going to wait. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Oh my gosh. And my mom is just pulling up now. Um, so we're going to call it here, but thank you so much for watching. And I don't remember if I was saying something else, but I'm not going to say anything else now because <laughs> this is going to be it. But thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. And I hope you do lots of knitting and watch lots of baseball. I Baseball's over, like Major League Baseball is over right now, but um, lots of winter leagues to watch. And anyway, um, and I hope you have a great week or month or however long it is until I chat with you next. So, bye.